aluminum plate and heat sink with the newer style all in one piece. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, Chris Sargent Taz here, and today I'm going to go over replacing your standard plate and heatsink with the newer style one piece integrated heatsink and aluminum plate. Um, if you have the older machines like I do, I have like the first one that came out and then the second version that came out with the threaded heat brake. I wanted to actually go to a smooth bore cracking style for ease of use. So this upgrade for a $14 investment, I think is worth it. Um, coming up, you're going to see the video. I'm going to go over how you install it and hopefully answer most of your questions in that video. And then we'll do a follow up.
Well, as you can see, it's a fairly easy install. The only thing I did differently was I only have three screws, even though I have four sections for them, I only have three. A lot of your newer ones actually have the four screws, so that's the only change that would be different for you on the newer, later V4s that came out. They actually have four screws. Um, I also did the um, bimetal heat break upgrade, which I figured I'd give it a shot. Everyone seems to be liking these, so I figured I'd give that a go. I also did a, the newer upgraded block, so it has the longer, I see if I can get it right here, it has a longer thermistor cartridge that rides on the inside rather than be on the side plates. Um, example is this guy, even though it's filthy, ignore that. But that little hole there is where the thermistor goes on this guy because there's no where to put it. Um, why do they make this change? Mainly because this is threaded for me. You may have, you know, the Kraken style if you have a V4, but I had the threaded ones, which are a pain in the butt to get this aligned properly. And you also wind up tearing up these wires because this all has to be in place when you put it into here. So twisting it around, it starts getting really, really close and tearing up these wires if you're not careful. That and also, depending on how it threads, you're going to have to wind up backing off your nozzle 14 times and turning it to get it to line straight up because even on this one I really had a slight canter on it which no big deal in operation and it still works but I'd like to keep it kind of you know parallel to my surface so I can see what's going on when I'm watching it just a personal preference not needed but I don't want this crashing into my fan duct or what have you and, and melting that so that's where I was at with trying to keep it straight with the newer style, it's the grub screws. So you got the two grub screws right here. And you more or less put your thermistor and your heater cartridge on. Pop it into where you want it. Tighten up the grub screws and you're in place. So everything goes all up in once and you're not worrying about tearing up your wiring by twisting it around trying to get it in where it needs to go. So it makes it a lot easier to install um, the integrated heatsink is nice because I found a couple of times I broke a fan being goofy trying to fit, clear a jam or what have you. I would take off that and the heatsink would drop and knock one of the um, bolts into the fan and chew up your fan. So that's why I wasn't thrilled with, you know, having a hold something extra in my hand when I'm taking it apart trying to fix something quick while I'm keeping it running which I guess we shouldn't do but we all do it so there's that the other thing to keep in mind is your tubing your your PTFE tube on a standard um, stock heat break goes all the way through see the bigger hole So your PTFE tube would have to go all the way through. What I like to do is put it out a little bit while it's in the block and then tighten up my nozzle so it sits flush against this and pushes it back up and you get a nice flush contact so no yellow leaks. That's how you do it on a standard. On an all metal or bimetal brake, you're gonna have a small cup. You still need a PTFE liner needs to go inside the smaller cup and go out. So for your standard, I want to say it's 47, 48 millimeters from bottom all the way up through the filament guide on a smooth bore type, all metal. That little cup is going to be 27, 28 millimeters in length on the PTFE tube. And then you also have to make sure that your filament guide goes back on so you need to have this PTFE liner regardless of which one you have you still need this liner in here it has to go all the way up to the top of your filament guide why does it have to go all the way to the top of your filament guide so this guy goes on like this I usually just turn it put the flat side against the, the aluminum plate itself and it's set up right 
where my PTFD tube lines up being is right just at that little line that's there. So when you're feeding filament, you don't get stuck. Because what will happen is you'll get to a, where you're, if you're manually feeding or even using the actual controls to feed it, it'll get down there and feel like it actually grabbed and you're, you feel like you're down in here when you're actually still up here because it's stuck on the PTFE tube. So make sure that PTFE tube goes up to just below those prongs. So you want to hit that little rim inside there so that when it goes down it'll sneak past and go into the PTFE lining which needs to be in here. Don't forget that because you're going to get heat creep or problems feeding because it's going to be too wide of a bore for it to go into your heat sink. That's where you get your problems at in clogging. You need that PTFE liner. So keep that in mind. That's the setup on it. Either either way on this, you need to have it in place. I don't have one set up already pre-done. But either way, it's going to need to be set up just like this. Still, regardless of which one you use. Um, the ease of use on this guy is the fact that, you know, you can actually set it all up this way, including your cartridges. Just slide it in. Position it where you want it, tighten up the grub screws, and you're good to go. So that's why the, the switch is an upgrade, in my opinion, and worth the time and trouble to go through it. Um, I'm not going to say it does any better with the heat sink. Uh, so far, in my testing between the bimetal and this, I haven't had any issues so far. And I've got about, I want to say, maybe 60 hours on the one I did prior to this video for testing. So I wanted to make sure everything worked before I did the second set and showing you how it gets done. So it actually was a really easy setup. I probably could just have filmed the first one and been done, but I wanted to make sure it was working. And I also wanted to run through some tests to make sure that there wasn't anything weird that would pop up once you did it um, remember to re-level when you're done because you may be slightly off this wants you want to make sure that this is actually all the way up in so you shouldn't have it like this or like this it needs to be all the way up in and it actually flush inside the cup make sure you do that your ptfe liner your filament guide and then get it all set up and make sure you take your bed down so you don't crash into it and make your adjustments for level so you either paper level use your uh, mesh bed leveling or if you have an ABL the ABL leveling gets done right around here but make sure you do the initial setup because it may be a little bit longer or shorter depending on what you had originally so that's a, a thing you have to do every time you change something on your hot end Always remember to re-level your bed because you may or may not wind up scratching it or crashing into it, and it's, it's very important. Um, other than that, I think that about covers it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, see ya.